Have we got any Star Trek news? I f it, I'm free. <laughs> it's over. <gasps> I finished it. The demon's curse has been broken. I finally, I did, I've done, done my debt. I've fucking done it. <laughs> Do you feel like Frodo at the end of the Lord of the Rings? Yeah. Um, holy shit. Like I'm just, you know, I don't know if I'll ever be the same again. It's uh, changed you. You'll be like Picard in the flute episode. Oh God. And then just be fine the next week. Uh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Uh, oh fuck, how do I? How do Search I? TNG maybe? TNG IMDB? There we go, that seems easier. <laughs> You're right. Um, I just want to fuck get the episode guide up because. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I finished it. I watched. I watched it all. I've seen all of the Star Trek now. Wow, apart I'm, from the films I'm, and the other spin-off series. Yeah, I've not seen those ones. Um, but. So that stuff. Where were we before? Uh, Lower Decks was one of the last ones you watched, right? Yeah. Um. Um. I have the Beholder. The guy he commits suicide. Oh, because there's like a um a fucking sadness in the walls. Oh. And people get sad. Okay. And um, yeah, it was okay. I yeah, I don't remember most of the last season. Um, whereas this episode, oh, is that where he is like, where everyone begins to de-evolve? Oh, that's it. And like Riker turns into a Neanderthal. He's like a yeah, he's a Neanderthal. Mm -hmm. Um, this was a great episode. I really enjoyed it. Okay. Um, tell me more. So it starts out with um. Uh, fucking what's uh, Data's cat called Spot? Mm -hmm. Spot's gonna have babies. Okay. Then. Oh, you know it's gonna be a good episode when it starts with Data's cat. <laughs> yeah, God, <laughs> man, they like. I think there was like ten episodes that featured that cat quite heavily <laughs> in this season. Yeah. Like they really were like, we need to get more mileage out of this cat. Yeah. Um, we're going to make its own spin-off series. Yeah, that's what they were aiming for. <laughs> yeah. um, I think they just had one focus group that really liked the cat. And they're like, oh, shit, put more of it in. <laughs> yeah. um, so his thing's going to get, um, going to have a baby. And so, whatever. Um, so there's a really contrived reason why it's Picard and Data. They, uh, whatever, a torpedo goes off track. And they're like, oh, fuck, we need to get that torpedo back. Mm -hmm. um, and Data's like, oh, it's, it's, that's going to take like a fucking, like a week. Mm -hmm. Look, I'll go and do it and I'll come back and just like rendezvous with you guys. It's a weird thing for the captain to do. Uh, although Data's like, I'll do this. And Picard's like, no, I'd like to uh, have a little space adventure. <laughs> uh, and they're like, surely you've got better fucking work to do than... <laughs> yeah, is he just avoiding his, like, hard work? I think he had, like... like oh, I can't do that thing! Sorry, yeah. I'm, I'm on the comet adventure! <laughs> yeah, yeah, they had to do, like, whatever, crew appraisals or something. He's like, no. <laughs> no Riker, you cover it while I'm gone. <laughs> you do that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Try not to fuck any of them, and we're gonna go... Yeah, don't turn on the Sherlock Holmes machine. <laughs> <laughs> don't turn that one on again. <laughs> uh, so then, they get back. Um, also, by this point, people are, like, you know, being a little bit weird. Mm-hmm. Um, and, it's a shame uh, Data didn't de-evolve. I'd like to see him turn into one of those, like, dunking. Oh, these, like, <laughs> uh, sipping things. Or, like, steam-powered Data. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, they come back, and um, now the, like, the, the ship is, like, about to shut down mm -hmm. slash explode. Oh, shit. Um, and uh, there's no human life signs on board, and they're like, what the fuck is going on? Um, then they like jump in there and everyone is now de-evolved people. Do any of the alien crew mates turn into like de-evolved aliens? Everyone does. So, um... It's one of them just like a blobfish going... Bawr. Well, so everyone is random because in everyone, they somehow explain it. Like in your genes, mm. you still have like spider genes. Oh, That's right. That's thing. <laughs> like crocodile genes. Like any kind of thing that could have been evolved wow. that's stored in your body somehow. Okay, any kind of creature that was available near the studio. <laughs> so they, well, so everyone's like half 
that. So like, there's like, there is like a Spider Man. Oh wow! Which is kind of fucking awesome. Um, who's kind of terrifying. Uh, there's Deanna Troy turns into like a fish woman. Um, like just in like a tub, just like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which Worf has de-evolved into some kind of like um, thing on fucking monster, and he's like. Top fucking dog on the ship. Yeah, I bet. Because um, he's just covered in spikes <laughs> and is uh, pretty terrifying. But like, as they're going around, yeah. like they go into like just the um, onto the bridge, and just someone has been ripped up. Like, just there's just like dead. Ooh, wow. Because some of the de evolved people pretty angry, <laughs> yeah, right. um, and and killy, and pretty sure yeah. that some of the crew members ate other crew members. That's what it sounds like. Uh, Are they getting transferred after this? <laughs> or are well, they just going to go talk to Vienna Troy for a week? <laughs> well, I guess they just... Because uh, no one remembers what they did uh, during that. And so I guess they're just like, okay... I wonder if know, any of them are just like, oh, I'm so full. Oh, I'm so full <laughs> after that. Something's in my teeth. <laughs> oh, Blue <God>. material. <laughs> Jeez. Um, but, you know, everything. You know, everything's fine okay. at that time. You know, whatever. Um, but they're like stamping around. Um, they go because they visit Deanna Troy. Their wolf is fucking mad because this is the start of the Deanna Troy wolf love love oh. arc. We've already had that for like a God, I totally forgotten that was a thing. Um, episode or two since Wolf having like the the time mm. time thing. Um, and they're like, oh fuck, he recognizes her as his mate. And he's <laughs> coming to get us because we've been near her. He has to assert dominance. Wow, they smell like her. And so he like chases them through the ship and is like is he trying to hump smashing. Them? No, I think he wants to kill them because oh, right. I'm pretty sure weird spiky wharf definitely fucked Fishwoman Deanna Troy. Well, yeah, that would have been his first instinct. That's probably what they did. Mm. Um and also this whole time. Captain Picard is de-evolving into like a um, like a capuchin monkey, <laughs> uh, and so he's like, "Oh, I'm scared. Ooh, I feel like I need to be higher up on the ship." And Data's just like, "Because Data doesn't de-evolve, sadly." Boo. And he's just like, uh, "Yeah, just fucking." I'd have loved it if he turned into like the 1950s Lost in Space robot. That'd or be something. great. Danger, danger, <laughs> Captain Picard. That'd be really good. Um, and so it mm. turns out they go to Data's room because they need to use a computer. Oh, yeah, because his computer is separate to the main computer because he is allowed his own computer, which is a copy of the main... I don't forget that. Wow. So they have to go to his room. Okay. And it turns out Spot has turned into an iguana. Oh, I was hoping it's going to be like a saber-toothed tiger or uh, something. But it still gave birth to kittens. Oh, um, and I'm pretty sure that Iguana would probably eat those fucking kittens. If yeah. it's been stuck there for like a week. Especially because they're going to be marrying and trying to like feed from the Iguana. And it's just going to, oh, crunch, <laughs> crunch, crunch. crunch. Yeah. Um, but they work out, oh, wait a second. B uh, the the body, it the womb protected them from the de-evolving virus. Oh, wow. So we just have to womb everyone. Um, and so they... But they're like, oh shit! But you know, spots evolved now, mm -hmm. um, and data data works all this shit out. Yeah, set phases to womb. Uh, but they're like, oh, there is a pregnant crew member. Ooh, I don't like the way this is going. But uh, who is I th in the whatever the Medi Bay? Mm -hmm. um, but she's now like an ape woman, um, but is still pregnant, but is about to die because she's being passed out for the last week oh. and but they luckily they get the thing they make an aerosol they spray it, and everyone just goes back to normal everything's fine okay Mission solved so what do they like take her stem cells or something to S make into the aerosol it's something like that it's oh wow uh, and <laughs> i thought they smelled bad on the outside oh. <laughs> but Jeez. on that episode if it hadn't have been for spot being pregnant yeah. They would never have found the cure. And if this woman had have already died, yeah. like so many other people had died on the ship, Jeez. couldn't have done the cure. I guess if there wasn't a pregnant person, yeah. couldn't have found the cure. That's just a real stroke of luck, isn't it? It was so lucky that... It Do you was... think if he hadn't found it and Worf was still trying to like murder hump him, 
Data would have just been like, well, I guess I just vent the crew into space and pilot this ship solo. Probably. They're all too dangerous. <laughs> I need well, to bring this ship home. I don't even know if... Um because uh, they had to also rush because there were like problems all over the ship mm. and oh yeah I guess you can't run the ship with one person um, it's going to explode but hang but on so Data left his pregnant cat unattended no he gave the cat to Lieutenant Barkley ah the after. most responsible person um, and uh, Barkley also hates cats probably scared of them yeah and so that was a weird <laughs> cameo at the beginning okay. for no reason <laughs> Um, so what yeah. did he turn into? Uh, oh, I can't remember. I don't know. Okay, doesn't matter. But it was a good episode. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. Even though the ending was like, oh, wow, this all really lined up <laughs> perfectly. Like, absolutely perfectly. Yeah. Wow. Um, I mean, that happens a fair bit. But he was the Spider-Man. Uh, Spider that makes sense, because he's scared of spiders. Um. So what else was going on? Uh, Jenny's End, which one was that? I says the Cardassians for a planet. Oh, oh God, so... Oh, he's to relocate the American natives. Yeah, so there's Yikes. the Native Americans, they live on this planet, the Cardassians mm. are like, this is whatever, they try, sign a new treaty or something, mm. this is now Cardassian space. They gotta go, and the Native Americans are like, this is a lot like a thing that happened before, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, Oof. And while that's going on, Wesley Crush is back, and he's now a little fucking prick again. Yeah. And he did not skip a beat, did he? <laughs> now he's... Uh, more smug somehow? More smug, and it just ends up with him. He goes off with the fucking the Wanderer or whatever the guy Yeah, is. yeah. He, go, he now, just jumps into that stranger's van. And now he's going to be a fucking star child? Yeah, it's really not explained at all, is it? Like, and no one has a problem with this. Yeah, they're all happy he's going. <laughs> yeah, because they don't like him. <laughs> but there was that episode, um, the, uh, the Scottish fuck ghost. And Picard is like, no, you are not going to that planet, even though you're really happy. It's clearly mind control. I fucking refuse. <laughs> yeah. But when Wesley's like, yeah, there's this fucking space weirdo, and we're going to travel the universe together. And they're like, yeah. he's yeah. quite a lot older than me. Yeah, and he's really fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. And everyone's just like, see ya. See ya, Wesley. Like, no one tries to stop him going. Even his mom is like, see ya, son. And they're just instantly leaves. But isn't he going to become some kind of weird, evolved, higher life form or something? I don't know. Something like that. The, the guy one is One like, with the universe? Oh, I can't remember. Things. But first, the, the Native Americans are going to teach us something. Right. And so they leave them. Yeah, I feel like he just climbed into a stranger's van because there were puppies in there. And yeah. Like, just drove off with them. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, also... They they make the deal with the like Native Americans, um, mm -hmm. where they're like, "Look, if you stay, you're like leaving the Federation right now." All oh, right. We can't ever come here again. I, and like, if I was living in Cardassian border territory, I wouldn't feel comfortable not being a Federation citizen anymore. Well, so you're just gonna get conquered immediately. Yeah, and they're like, "Don't worry, it'll be fine." <laughs> and they're like, "Okay, good luck with the." expansionist, militaristic, super fucking evil dude. <laughs> yeah. um, but now you're just under their jurisdiction. Yeah. You're part of their... You're going straight into like forced labor camps. Yeah, 100%. Because they have done that to <laughs> loads of people. <laughs> oh, yeah. And pretty sure they're going to turn up with thousands of guys with guns <laughs> and instantly just enslave everyone. Yeah. Like, that, literally... That is how the Cardassians roll. Yeah. Um, so... Oof. Um, I feel like they, they are definitely going to have a bad end. Um, you know, it's a, a moral moral thing, and I know there's mm. the parallels with the previous times, but um, Cardassians ain't chill dudes. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> no. Uh, Oof. Then Firstborn, so although, was like, ah, fuck, it's a fucking Alexander episode. Yeah, he's a real wiener. Um, but, like, the guy, this, the, this guy comes along, mm. And he's like, oh, I'm here to... I was sent by your wolf family. Um, I've got, like, the fucking special ring, which only, like, a family member could have. Okay. Because someone's been sent to you 
fucking assassinate you. Ooh. And they've gone to this, like, whatever, Klingon outpost where they're doing Klingon festivals. Sure, headbutting. Um, and old like uh, no, it was stick and hoop. A, <laughs> no, stick and hoop. It was, <laughs> it was a very dancey sword thing. Oh. Um, which, sure, was fine. <laughs> yeah, it still feels weird, a battle of being called a sword. It's not a sword. Surely it's a different kind of weapon. Fine, it's a it's a blade. No, but they call it a sword. Like that's oh. what it is. I just I don't like it. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> but yeah, so also they're like, we got uh, Alexander. He doesn't want to take the Klingon ritual to become a fucking warrior, mm -hmm. and he has to do it before his thirteenth birthday. Otherwise, miss the boat. He's a fucking weenus. I don't know. <laughs> right. And this guy's like. We're worried that you're not training your son, raising yeah. him to be a Klingon. But he's not. He's never there. He's the most absent father you've ever seen. And Wolf's like, I'm doing my best. Um, <laughs> I see him once every three years. <laughs> he barely turns up. <laughs> yeah. um, and so there's some stuff. They're trying to get the kid into it. The kid, he's fucking sucks. Mm -hmm. um, he's like, mm, I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. and they're like, fine, don't do it. And then it, it's like ending with the guy, the guy that like came to join them, being like, oh yeah, your son's fucking weak. He's gonna let the family down at some point. Mm -hmm. And Wolf's like, don't, don't say that. Um, <laughs> whatever. They, they Just tough <laughs> in his copium. <laughs> they <laughs> go their separate ways. And then like the guy, he's like going into Alexander's bedroom with a fucking gun. Oh, yikes. But then Wolf comes in and saves him. Mm -hmm. But then it turns out that this guy is Alexander from the future. <gasps> what? Who has time traveled back in time. To like serve himself a cup of harden up. Because <laughs> he turned out to be like some kind of bitch diplomat. <laughs> right. Um, who tried to make peace in the Klingon Empire. Yeah. The Klingons didn't like that. And then wow. they murdered Worf in the future. <gasps> and it turned out because he had never learned to fight, he couldn't protect them. And then time traveled back in time. To murder himself? To then murder himself to save his dad. I don't know. It was a wild... Wild adventure, but I really enjoyed the twist. <laughs> wow, I did not um, see that coming. Me neither. Because <laughs> I was like, why the fuck are they going to shoot this guy? Wait, that's him? In the Wow. Because he's like, father, it's me. Look into your heart. Do you know it? And he's like, yeah, son, I, I do know it's you. I feel like, I like to think that if I met 20-year-older boy, mm -hmm. And I knew I was in a world where I have time traveled myself many times. <laughs> yeah, literally like <laughs> two weeks ago you time traveled. Yeah. I feel like I might just go, God, you are very familiar. You look so, a lot like, hang on a minute. At, we're the, in <laughs> at the very beginning, um, he does say to the guy, like, you look familiar. Oh, okay. Um, but especially when they're stood right next to each other. You'd <laughs> yeah. be like, hang on. You guys look a lot alike. Yeah, we've had 14 time travel adventures in the last six months. I think there's something. Yeah, going we can, on we can here. believe this. Um, <laughs> but yeah, oh. you know what? Didn't hate that episode. I, I've really warmed up to the Klingons. I think the Klingons, I like their, uh, their storylines. Fair enough. They're very all over the place with their honor. Oh, yeah. Their honor rules are, like, convoluted. Super hard What fast. counts as honorable and what doesn't count as honorable. Is... You know what's an alien culture? Who are we to judge? That's yeah, just exactly. how they roll. Yeah, we'll never understand it for humans. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. Well, they, they were cool. Uh, what's this? Bloodlines. Oh, this was kind of a f kind of fun. Uh, the fucking Damon Bok... The guy who did the mind control on Picard. Okay. With a mind control device. He turns up and he's like, you killed my son a long time ago. Um, I'm super mad. Mm. And you know what? I'm going to kill your son. <gasps> and Picard's like, what? <laughs> Didn't know I had one. Um, somehow they track down this guy mm. uh, on this planet and they fly over and they meet him and then they like fucking teleport him on board and it turns out it is Picard's son. What? And I mean, this, He was a bit of a dirty dog back in the day. Yeah, so it was like some woman he knew for like two weeks, he fucked her and then like <laughs> flew off to um, space. Space calls me. <laughs> Gotta go back to space. There's more space. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. so what a what a what a guy! Find find a guy, um, and uh, it's his son. 
but then the guy is a f bit of a fucking dick. And um, Damon Bock has... Every time he turns up, the tech that he's using... Before he had this like mind control thing where he could fuck with Picard. Yeah. Um, he's just like invented a technology which lets him freely teleport across like star systems through their shields just onto wow. the ship. Wow. Just totally chill. He does that. I feel like people should be using that tech. Yeah. A lot. Well, don't worry. JJ Abrams made one of those as well in the new Star Trek reboot. Oh, so everyone's good. got it now. Yeah. Oh, they God. just don't use it for some reason. Don't worry about it. But yeah. Uh, they did that for a bit. And it's like, he's constantly turning up and like taunting Picard. And then um, eventually like they teleport oh, the guy man. away. Are the Ferengi less weird? Is this, is this at the point where the Ferengi have like got proper makeup and aren't weird goblin people? Yeah, they're, they're a, a bit, bit more, more like... A bit more well-rounded, like actually have a bit of lore to them. Hmm. Um, I like the Ferengi. I think they're cool. Is this the one where the crew are like... This weird vendetta is not profitable now. So that was the... Well, that does happen on this one. But it was on the previous one as well. It was Damon Box crew again. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So it turns out the guy isn't Picard's son. Uh, fucking changed his DNA because you just do that. Sure. Well, if you can teleport across the galaxy, what else can, um, can't you do? But he gave him fucking like a space degeneration disease oh. by fucking with his DNA. And they, whatever, Dr. Crusher works it out. And then they're like, he's, not, he's not your son. <laughs> and they're like, oh, shit, but should we go save him? And I'm like, yeah, fuck it. Like, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's on the way. <laughs> yeah, we'll do it. <laughs> yeah. um, and then they go over, Picard's got a gun, and he's like, that's not my son. You're an idiot. Um, fuck you. <laughs> and by the way, all the Ferengi crew, yeah. that isn't my son. We're never going to pay you money. Because um, the guy was told them it's uh, a ransom lot, I see. and then they're all like well, fuck oh this wait, noise there's then. no profit and they all <laughs> just instantly turn on the captain <laughs> like really quickly I love that you can rely on the Ferengi to just abandon anything not profitable man but that's it you know people like no they're fickle yeah. Uh, no, they are the most trustworthy people. You just got to the pay world. them more than anyone else. Make it the most profitable. They are <laughs> yeah. the most reliable people. They are so much more reliable than Klingon Honor. <laughs> yeah. Which, loosey goosey at the best of times. The Frankie, yeah. very, very consistent. You might like some of the later Deep Space Nine stuff because there's loads and loads of Ferengi and Klingon stuff going on all the time. Really? Like one of the main characters is a Ferengi guy and his brother who run a bar and they've always got a scheme going. <laughs> like, like a scheme? <laughs> they're like, this is how we become millionaires, idiot brother. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to bring in a shipment of this stuff and I'm going to like just fuck around. Um, they're, good, they're good boys. It's kind of fun. And there's a Klingon general. I forget his name now. Him and Worf are always... Have, talking about Klingon adventures and stuff. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Just like half the show is those two. Wow. Just fucking around. It's kind of fun. Um, what else do we have? Has anyone... I can't remember what happens in Next Generation or not, but have they done like the Ferengi ear-scratching thing? Yeah. Uh, Loxana Troy, I think, seduces a Ferengi that kidnaps them okay for some fucking reason and she like jerks off his ear yeah because um, man that happens a lot in deep space nine anytime anyone wants to get a ferengi to do something they just start fucking jacking off his ear and then stop and <laughs> blue then, ball him and then they're like right now do the thing and they're like <laughs> i was so close <laughs> and yeah, Luxana Troy it's jerked off a Ferengi ear. <laughs> yeah. and I just find it so odd that everyone's fine with that. It's super weird. <laughs> just, it's, you don't just go up to a person and just start like fucking <laughs> rubbing through their trousers. <laughs> Until you totally blue ball them. And, and then, then they're like, fine, yes, I'll, I'll turn the ship around. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh. My God. Dirty. Oh, uh, show. Yeah, what's this? Um, a ship. The ship is making a weird fucking pipe cleaner baby. Okay. It was fine. There's <laughs> a lot of hollow decking. Oh. Okay. Um, and a lot of just fucking shenanigans going on. Sure. Um. And uh, we got to take a break. Oh shit. 
Should we take a break? Then we'll come back. We'll finish this. And then we'll play some Warhammer. Yes. Then we'll be out of here. Oh. Then it's tomorrow. Then it's next week. And we're playing more Warhammer. Oh, it never ends, <laughs> Tom. Uh, so we will be back in five. Boop. Ben, ba ba ben, ba ba ben. Tom, 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 ta da tom, ta da tom. Ben, ben, ben. Welcome back. Thank you. Welcome back. You're welcome. This is it. This is the final TNG roundup. Yeah, the last, the last of it. And as we all know, all good things must end. So true. So very true. Do you get it? Uh, what have you done to my beautiful chat? Press, press the button. <laughs> uh, so, next up, boom, preemptive strike. This was a great episode. Mm. Big fan. I like um, uh, Ro. Yeah, Instant Ro is cool. Honestly, feels like one of the more complex, well written characters. Yeah, she actually seems to have some kind of backstory and isn't just the fucking best at what they do. <laughs> yeah, um, and. Uh, you know, it's nice having someone who has a more complicated, kind of darker, more fucked up history. Because, mm. you know, not everything is super squeaky clean in old mm -hmm. Star Trek world, even though most people just have perfect lives. You yeah. Know. A couple of people are really on, on the fringes. Um, I see that, that was, a, it was a cool episode. Mm. She um, is on the ship. They're worried about whatever, fucking uh, space rebels mm. who are attacking the um, Cardassians because they live in the, like, the neutral... The zone, demilitarized. The demilitarized yeah. zone. Mm. And they're attacking the Cardassians because the Cardassians keep doing things like what? fucking bombing them. <laughs> Even <laughs> yeah. though they say, like, oh, no, we didn't mean to. <laughs> Whoops. Training exercise. <laughs> yeah. And so these guys, they're, like, attacking the Cardassians yeah. back. Because they're, like, the Federation isn't doesn't want to break the treaty. Yeah. The Federation is more concerned about, like, kind of maintaining the peace, like, mm. than saving these people. But, I don't know. It's a, com a complex issue. Um, yeah. And uh, so they sent her to go undercover to join up with them because mm -hmm. uh, she's got, like, her spotty history where she was court-martialed in the past. Mm -hmm. She's a Bajoran that grew up in a fucking, like, horrible military camp. Mm-hmm. You know, she's the perfect person to yeah. join the rebels. And then it turns out she's maybe a little too perfect to join the rebels. Uh, yeah, a little <laughs> bit too too on board because they come up with this plan to kill all of the rebels in one go. Um, and she's like, I'm not okay with this. I think I'm not okay with this now. Especially because they've got like that like little mm. peaceful town and just some Cardassians just turn up and just start fucking just shooting people. Oh, fuck. And she's like, Cardassians are pricks. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm going to join the people that don't like Cardassians because I don't like Cardassians. Yeah. Uh, but there is a good, there's a good scene where to like set up her, um, you know, uh, her cover story. Mm -hmm. She like goes into this bar and like sits down and then um, some Starfleet people come in and they're like, literally like two seconds later mm -hmm. and they're like, we're looking for a Bajoran woman with dark hair. Has anyone seen her? Um, and there are like 12 people in this very <laughs> small room. And she's just sat in the corner. <laughs> and how, like, she starts, like, kissing this guy. But, like, one of the 12 people in this small room, like, they seem like the most inept people <laughs> at tracking someone if they can't find her in this room. They're like the stormtroopers at Moss Eisley. <laughs> it's a bit like that, but even Moss Eisley had a bit more going on mm. and a slightly more complicated layout. Super bad. Um, yeah, they're just good at shooting. Uh, but yeah, so she ends up, like, you know, uh, kind of breaking her loyalty to Picard. Mm -hmm. um, Shit. And uh, goes off and joins, joins the Rebels. Wow, Which, good for her. It was a it was a it was a good episode. Well, there's a character exactly like her who's one of the main characters in Deep Space Nine, and I wonder if at some point that character was written for her, because mm. they're so similar. Like they're basically the same person with a different name. Oh, really? 
So I wonder if when they did the spin-off, they were like, oh, people like her, let's pu push her over. Because it's always good to keep some of the, some recognizable elements when you do a spin-off. Yeah. yeah, I think that makes sense. Oh, it was supposed to be her, but the actress didn't want to do it, apparently, according to Viz T. Really? Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Um, okay. There is that awkward scene in the first Deep Space Nine where Picard turns up and is like, hands the new captain a torch. Oh, <laughs> nice. Turns to camera and says, don't worry, it's going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Love that. Um, yeah. Which is really, really awkward. I can't remember if he actually hands anything over to him or not, but it feels like that's what that scene is. Because <laughs> there was a line. Um, there's... I can't remember which episode it was. Um... Uh, God, it was like one of these. I don't know. They like need something, or like they're tr tracking someone, or oh, maybe it's the uh the this one because they think it's the Don Donbus sisters were trying to kill Worf. Do you remember those? Oh yeah, yeah, those uh, crazy wacky Klingon sisters, and they're like, oh. We last heard they went to Deep Space Nine. We'll like phone up someone because they think they phone up a oh, okay the Ferengi who is the barkeep. Mm -hmm. um, and they're like, uh, "Oh, how's it going there?" And they're like, "Oh, you know, it's like there's never a dull moment in Deep Space Nine. <laughs> Make sure you come and check it there's out. So it, many great adventures. It's happening so cool here. here. Um, and like <laughs> really hammed it up. I was like." <laughs> Amazing. This is just, uh, this is like this a little. Is excellent little cross promotion in there. Just, uh, just a little advert there. Um, go check it out. Uh, uh, amazing. But yeah, so then, boom, the last episode. Oh. It was an hour and a half long. Mm -hmm. I don't think it needs to be an hour and a half long. Mm. That was usually the way with the double episodes. They never usually had quite enough to fill two episodes um, with. And I would say it was fine. Fair enough. Like, it's just like a little walk through futures, and like, this is what's going to happen to everyone one day, maybe. There was like a little bit of the past, and a little bit of the future, and mm. um, uh, Geordie's grown his eyes back. Yeah. Brad? Wild. Um, I think they fixed that in the second film. I think he gets his eyes back in film two, because he's like, I am sick of wearing this thing. Oh, but originally he couldn't do it, because his eyes were so gone... Yeah. Technology couldn't be a thing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. In, is it in First Contact that he has well, robot eyes? Well, in this episode, uh, he... I think it's this episode where he starts growing his eyes back. Oh. That's a, that's a thing. But I'm pretty sure he is still wearing his visor in the other ones. Okay. Um, but yeah... Uh, He's in that. Wolf's now. Is this the one where they, there's, there's the Enterprise, but it's got like a third nacelle? Yeah. And it's like Enterprise X. That's the future one. And Riker's the captain? Yeah. And God, everyone else has aged pretty nicely, but Riker looks like shit. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's like in the future, everyone fucking hates each other now. Aww. Uh, and uh, Deanna Troy's dead. <laughs> um, rip. Yeah. Uh, Jeez. And then there's like time shit and cues there, kind of queuing around, having a good time. Um, and there was, it was fine. It was just a bit long. Mm. Like, cause it's a nice send off, though. I feel like it feels like it really feels like an end to the show. Yeah, yeah, that was good because like you see what Picard is probably going to do when he's older, even mm. if he's got fucking like space Alzheimer's um, mm. in the future, and. Uh, Whatever, everyone's everyone's doing their own thing. Mm. I feel like Geordie probably had the best best time because he's got a wife and kids, and he just seems super fucking happy. Oh, good for Geordie! Um, just having a great having a great time. Um, but yeah, like the actual like mystery of like Picard is time jumping between the three times, like the mm. current day, the future times when he's old, and then the old times when he first joined the ship. Mm -hmm. um, and like them just solving that thing where it just means whatever. It's a paradox. 
Okay. And the because they did a thing that then causes all of these things to happen, and so young him is going to have to do it at every point in his life as well. Okay, it's one of those um, classic and, time travel loop. Uh, Q's there, and he's like, "Good job, Picard. You you thought about it being a paradox, and that means that you're smart now." Um, and so I'm not going to destroy all of humankind or something. Oh, wow. Um, and that is the... Uh, oh, shit. Does, does uh, O'Brien get a send-off? O'Brien's there, but he is not part of the... Um, they all play a poker game at the end, and Picard comes and joins them. He's like, I should have done this. I should have done this before. Um, I don't know why I never did. And they're like, you are always welcome. And I just wish it just like slowly panned out of that shot to just O'Brien <laughs> stuck sat in his, at his room. table. No, he's not sat. He's not allowed a chair. <laughs> Stood at his table, just like. Uh, does anyone need transporting? <laughs> okay. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. <laughs> and like they're all just having this great time playing poker, uh, just all getting along, and yeah. him just all by himself. Because he is in the episode. Yeah, he is on the ship, but he's but just not allowed at the, the fun table. Nope, not allowed to play poker. But he's not an officer, right? Oh. He's a... Uh, he's a chief. He's a chief, yeah, which is like a non-commissioned role, rank. Oh. It's like one of the highest, it's the highest rank you can be without being an officer. Okay, well, yeah, fuck me. That's, uh, that poker game's only for officers. Exactly. Not fucking plebs. <laughs> Even the ensigns outrank the chief. Wow. It's like um, in Battlestar Galactica, do you remember chief, chief of the Deck in that? There's that whole episode where the, whoever's in charge isn't there. And so, like, fucking, not hot dog, but crash down. Oh, okay. Is like the senior officer in the group and chief is there and he's got like 10 years experience yeah, yeah. on and him. Yeah, he's done loads and of... And he's just like, hey, crash down, we should probably do this. And he's just like, yeah, chief. Okay, that's my order. What, do what <laughs> chief <Yeah>. said. <laughs> I remember that. Um, but yeah, um, so no, no good times for old O'Brien. <laughs> oh my God, did you see that in chat? O'Brien, transport us another round of drinks. <laughs> just like, oh... <laughs> It's like, oh, guys, I could, I could just bring those myself. <laughs> uh, no, don't worry about it, O'Brien. I think this will be quicker. <laughs> Beep. <laughs> just wow. That, that poor fucking guy. I know. You're just going to feel bad for him, isn't he? Oh, oh poor old O'Brien. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's all over now. There you go. And you never have to watch it again. Thank God. Thank God for that. Achievement unlocked. Display it on your profile page. I did it. Well I done. I did it. Well done to me. Um, now what's Stargate? Uh, no, I don't fucking care about Stargate at all. What about the Naquitus reactors? Oh, the liquid Naquitus reactor is going wrong again. <laughs> God, that's like every fucking episode. I mean, to be fair, you could say the same thing about the warp core. <laughs> it's true. There's a lot of warp core <laughs> stuff and tachyon fields and... There's just a list, particles. Of, list of buzzwords. <laughs> yeah. um, also, fuck me. In that mm. um, uh, the episode where the pipe cleaner monster is made, okay, um, they're like they're just like bombing around, mm -hmm. and then they're like, oh shit, the ship literally just went to warp. Just Ooh. went to like pff, max warp. Supposed to do that, um, and they're like, we're gonna have to like vent the fucking reactor mm -hmm. um, to stop this because we can't do anything else and then we won't be able to fly again for like another week mm -hmm. and they're like shit do that and then they stop and they're like oh fuck okay this is fine and then they're like okay what happened they're doing the scan mm -hmm. and they're like oh holy shit like fucking tachyon particles or something anti-tachyon <laughs> particles <laughs> yeah um, where we were not. they had like coated the ship and uh, the ship jumped to warp speed like 1.5 seconds before we were about to explode. And there's no way we could have uh, tracked that because our scanners aren't aimed in that direction. <laughs> right. And so they so almost fucking died. And if it wasn't for the pipe cleaner... So it, it saved them? It on saved purpose? them. Did it know? Because, yeah, it knew about it. Oh. Because it was, like, in their systems. I don't know. Okay. And jumped them to space. But if this was any other week... Mm, they'd just all be dead. They just all would have instantly died. <laughs> yeah. And that would have been the end of the show. Fucking hell. <laughs> uh.